Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So recently we did a video about uh, Russian or Soviet, I should say, uh, missile launches 1950 to 1990, and it, it received some. Uh, really good feedback really i know it wasn't um, amazingly accurate and we made some mistakes it was just meant to give an overview but um some people liked it and i found personally found it really really interesting i love military history um and mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff and sherman's the same and it was just i was just uh, going through google images the other day i get most of my images from google images you know um, i haven't got time to sit there and draw everything myself obviously so and i found this one you can see on my screen here now um uh, and i apologize that it's a kind of really bad resolution i couldn't find a proper high resolution one from it also i don't know where it came from a book or a manual or something i'm not sure but i just found it absolutely captivating um now this video isn't going to be particularly educational it's just something i found interesting and from my experience that means probably something you the viewers will also find interesting so what we've got here is the size of uh, the missiles and I can't zoom in if I zoom in it goes really bitty and horrible looking so this is the best we're going to get um, uh, the size of the missiles that we were talking about basically um, and some uh, US kind of equivalents as well and so if we have a quick look at things that we know about SA-3 that's one we had in our uh, in our video and you can see the SA-3 that's the one that had the four of them on that static uh, kind of uh, turning launcher and that SA-3 there it's up to six meters uh, six meters is 18 just over 18 uh, hang on uh, three twelve yeah 18 feet i mean that's long if you measure bear, it out bear in mind that you can see there on the diagram that's with the launcher and the launch the base launcher itself is like uh, just a foot the the launch booster excuse me roger it's like a meter in and of itself so that shaves a meter off of the actual terminal missile yeah i mean the terminal missile i guess is yeah fairly small like you said it goes down to four meters or something um and that's why it's like five five that's why i consider um, SA-3, I always say SA-3s are quite manoeuvrable, although they're old and the radars aren't the best and whatnot. If you get shot at by them, they're hard to dodge because uh, they're, yeah. Um, but just, and, and I would have considered something like an SA-6, uh, a big missile. You've seen them on the back of those launchers, they're, they're massive. And a buck, a buck um, is a real big missile. You can see that buck is an SA-11, I've got the cursor around it now. Um, um, what I consider a real big missile and that's just under six meters and I thought that was big 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 but I had no idea there was such things as SA5, SA2, SA1 and look at the size of them absolutely gigantic Indeed. so as you can see as I said the SA2 is currently being developed for the ground units in Eagle Di by Eagle Dynamics at the moment so we can look Roger. forward to seeing those and look at that SA10 that SA10 is the one that goes I mean this is the the nine we've got the 1980s version it goes 60 miles 60 miles is a long way newer versions of that go uh, literally hundreds of miles but look at uh, uh, SA5 this is telling a uh, five uh, 300 mile range Jesus Christ SA5 so Oh, yeah, my apologies. I've just seen the, the range kilometers. I didn't see that. Right, range in kilometers. So 20 kilometers for the SA-3. Yeah, I'd agree with that. 30 kilometers for the SA-6. Yeah, I'd agree with that. We find the ranges ever so slightly scaled down in DCS. I don't know but if Matt Wagner will tell me off for that. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's how, just how we find them. Um, yeah, the SA-10 has got uh, 100 kilometers. That is 60 miles, like I said. 30 kilometers for the SA-10. Yeah, so that's the S-200 system. That's 200. Right, okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. So... Okay, that's fine. So it's the SA-10 in the 80s. That's right, isn't it? In the early 80s. No, it's no, it's the it's the S-200, which is the predecessor first deployed into service in 1967, according to Wikipedia. Right, understood. Okay, uh, then we've got the um, not chaparrales, what are they called? Um, the little ones, Strellas. Remember, we learnt the other day that there are several versions of Strellas. So there's an SA-9 in there. That's the Strella Rev two or three i've completely forgotten now two, two I think. So that's eight eight kilometers uh, low altitude and you know i don't know the exact size but it's right down there with the kind of size of a sidewinder or you know an air-to-air -air missile it's tiny and an sa-13 that's revision three or four of the strella 13. the igla i believe Oh, it's the Igler. No, the Igler was SA-18. The 13, oh, I'm, my bad. I'm pretty sure it was uh, It was a Strela, and it was, it was, if you remember, we discovered it was the one that had the um, uh, front-facing IR sensor, uh, if you know what I mean, front aspect. That, that was the beauty of it, um, and that's why it was... So it only had 8, eight kilometres range still, but it could fire on a head-on target. Um, yeah, but what I didn't realise is that these behemoths existed. I mean, look at the SA-4. Look at the size of it compared to something that I was thought was big, like an SA-11. It's like a spaceship, and that goes medium to high, and that's 70, that's 70 kilometres range. And an SA-5, 
I wonder when an SA5 was built. It's like bigger than an airplane. I, I just told you 1967 is when it was introduced. The and design began in the early 50s. And so this was for shooting down Blackbird then, I'm guessing, and U2. That's what that was for. It would have been U2 era Blackbird was not was not uh, in service in 67 as far as I'm aware. Right, so these, this, the, these big ones, these big daddies were designed for shooting down the high-level reconnaissance and maybe even high-level nuclear bombers. Um, and again, I'm normally sick in the head, and now I'm actually sick in the body as well, so it could be completely wrong. No, 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 Hashem is never wrong. Right, so SA-5, yeah, and then look at the size of the SA... This is the size of this thing. That's an SA-1, which must have been old, old, old. So that must have been late 40s, early 50s. Radar, Sam. Yeah, so and look at the size of it, 12 metres. That's bigger than an F-15 fighter, which is a big plane. That's like bigger than a B-2. 25 in world war ii one its missile. reporting name in the soviet union was the s25 berkut and that's nearly that's nearly f- which which translates to golden eagle that's nearly 40 feet that's an, a, a big house is like 30 32 feet this is 40 feet long Absolutely it was introduced ridiculous. into service in 1955 and removed from service in 1982 82 so i imagine looking at the thing it must have had z- approximately zero maneuverability and the range it was still 50 kilometers so it still did you know 30 miles or something but okay must have been uh, it says it's medium altitude and the sa2 this is one that interests me and i'm glad it's coming to dcs because it has history 1960 this sa2 i believe was that shot down gary powers uh, if you've watched uh, oh i think it was called a bridge of spies it's a new spielberg movie fantastic movie about not the... exactly new in 2018 uh, what it was the, the movie is new isn't it i'm fairly certain it's been around for a few years okay well that's new for cap if, if, if i see anything within the last 10 years that's considered new by me um right isn't it yeah anyway it's it's got gary powers swapping with blast what was the russian's name i've forgotten you guys all know it um the Russian spy, the famous one, I've forgotten, but yeah, and he was shot down by the SA-2 at, what, 65,000 feet or something? So, and this was, this was 1960, it shows, and it shows exactly the, how potent this was back then for shooting down. Well, to give you an idea, if you look on the Wikipedia page of the SA-2, the wars that it served in, the Vietnam War, the Six-Day War, the Indo-Pakistan War of 1965, 1971, the Yom Kippur War, the Iran-Iraq War, the Gulf War, the War in Abkhazia, a.k.a. the Russo-Georgian War of the 1990s, the First Libyan Civil War, Syrian Civil War, Yemeni Civil War, Saudi-led intervention in Yemen, conflicts in Najran, Jizan, and Azir. Jesus, that's big. I've got it as the S-75 Desna. Is that what you've got it as? That is its Russian designation. The NATO designation is SA-2 Guideline. Roger. It's a big bitch. Look at all the versions of it. Of course, it's again, the original version is quite old, but at the end of the day, it could still do its job. It took many, took down many in a four Phantom and U.S. Uh, aircraft during the Vietnam War. But it did. The size of it must have had a whopping great warhead on it as well. What an absolutely man! Look at the world. I've got a map of the world here. I'm looking where it served, and that is a lot of places, yo. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to like enjoy these Sams. I always hated them because they all they do ever do is shoot me down. But I love the technology that's gone into them and and their development. Okay, so that's interesting. The SA5 is a great big thumper. Let's uh, have a look at the SA5 on Wikipedia then. It's a big old boy. I got it as a gammon. Have you got it as a gammon? Yes, that is its uh, NATO designation. Its Russian designation is the S-200 Angara. S-200 Angara. Yeah, so that is... If you've been playing Armour 3, you might recognize that name from a recent DLC. And to give you uh, an idea of the size of it, I'm just looking at this picture here, uh, on the top right of Wikipedia, it's got a flanker in the background. The flanker is... Is that flanker a MiG? Oh, it might be a MiG. 29. Mm, yeah, that tail section yeah, looks like a MiG, MiG. definitely not All a right. suit. Well, the MiGs, I mean, it's not the biggest in the world, but it's also, you know, it's a big, it's a big modern fighter. And look at the size of the missile. I believe that was a Ukrainian camouflage. Yeah, it is. I think it's Ukrainian. Um, and uh, just look at the size of it. It absolutely dwarfs the fighter. Imagine this thing coming at you that's bigger than an aeroplane. It's just absolutely crazy. Whopping great yep. warhead. Size of that warhead. 
and the range 300 kilometers in 1960s just absolutely ridiculous and then one thing that gets me a bit is yeah, how do they get a lock like we've been doing some experimenting we like to push to the edges of DCS which is generally pretty accurate and we can't get a, a solid lock on another medium-sized aeroplane um, until about 50 miles as, as you well know how well do, the how basic principle is the ground radar is substantially more powerful than the one you can stuff into the nose of the mm. aircraft that's why the F-14 with its org 9 was so revolutionary at the time for air interception uh, the other thing is of course because it's on the ground if you point your radar up you can go as low frequency as you need to and not worry about ground cut clutter for the most part Roger yeah absolutely so size is matters in dish in terms of radars and stuff. Okay. basically you can put in a much more powerful pulse at a much lower frequency and still get returns Roger okay so that's all of that I mean that was just that was I know it wasn't particularly educational but I thought that was just incredibly interesting I would love to go to an airbase one day and see all of these missiles next to each other and just see the size of them you see a 40 foot long goddamn missile um, and I mean uh, technically that's even dwarfed by the NATO the Nike Hercules what the deuce is that the Nike Hercules now I've seen a few videos of this let me quickly I've never even seen it, it let me go and have a look in uh, Wikipedia It's a beast. Wait, five tons just for a missile. Must be yes. multi. It must be multi-stage. So the Nike uh, project was essentially America's first set of uh, radar-guided SAM systems, primarily designed, uh, well, basically for, for researching air, -to -air defense, but. Afterwards, the U.S. basically went more along the lines of frontline air-to-air -air mm -hmm. missiles, like the um, like the Hawk and the Patriot, along with air superiority via Air Force and uh, Navy air superiority fighters instead. So yeah, so this was in the area of this was in the area of what I call the uh, you know kind of the uh, the apex of the Cold War, where everyone was developing the biggest fastest highest flying airplanes and therefore the biggest fastest high flying sams so everything was big 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 and fast uh, which is great because it's got some amazing planes look at the flight ceiling this bloody missile 150,000 feet just in case the russians developed a plane that could fly 150,000 feet mac nearly mac 4 just the power mm -hmm. of these things that's really ridiculous yeah so the the, the the original uh the original Nike system was uh, deployed in 1953, according to this. Oh, God, it was armed with a nuclear warhead. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see how long that lasted. It was a surface-to-air missile used by the U.S. and NATO armed forces for medium and high-altitude long-range air defense. So this was shooting for aeroplanes, not for bombing countries. It was normally armed with the W-31 nuclear warhead. So they would fire I this I can up. see why they decided to get rid of it. Ooh. That's amazing. So you'd fire this baby up. I never knew this existed into a, a formation of the TU-95 bears or whatever was around at the time. One would go off and just obliterate, you know, because at the time they were facing nuclear annihilation by, you know, bears and other things like that. So it was acceptable, I well, guess, to, uh, to set off... At the time, it probably would have been something more like the... What's the name? The TU-4, which is basically just a literal Soviet copy of the B-29. Roger. And thinking about it as well, it's not a bad idea, a way of shooting down um, ballistic missiles. Because obviously, even to this day, as far as I'm aware, there's no reliable way of shooting down ballistic missiles. But this, you, technically, you could. You could get within a mile of it. So, you know, you could probably do that. <coughs> set, the warhead off, set the warhead off, and yep, you're going to create some fallout. Of it, but you're going to get that missile. So it's an interesting tactic. Uh, like I said, where it was just um, uh, what's the word? Not exacerbation, but where everything was proliferating at the time, getting bigger and faster. Within there is actually a paragraph, several paragraphs here on anti-missile upgrades. Oddly enough, Marjan Project Nike. Uh, let's see. Lots of controversy. Ah, they were deactivated due to the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles, thus making the threat of nuclear Soviet bomb attacks, bomber attacks, basically irrelevant, thus making the Nike irrelevant. Wow, okay, still impressive piece of kit. I'd love to go. If I ever get better, I would love to go to the United States and see one. I think that'd be pretty fascinating just imagine if we ever got to the point where we could go around with a camera and um, if, well apparently according to the screenshot there's one on us route 70 
uh, near the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Roger, that would be awesome. Right, and let's just have a look at the last. Would go. So that is my new favorite, the Nike Hercules, the SA2, SA5, SA1, because they're so big. God, you'd see them coming, wouldn't you? Uh, you've got the on the NATO, you've got the Hawk. Now, uh, I know this isn't this isn't technically accurate, but I always call it a Phoenix because uh, it always reminds me of the Phoenix. You know that the um, Tomcat used to fire. Um, uh, this is not a phoenix. I'm assuming you're referring to the hawk, right? Yeah, now it's... it's now, I, I get the feeling that the reason you're doing that is not because it reminds you of the phoenix, but because in a number of uh, development slash propaganda ops, the Iranian Air Force actually showed images of trying to fire these things off of pylons from an F-14. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm looking at them now on... on um, what do you call it? Wikipedia. Yeah... Yeah, they don't. They look different to AIM fifty fours, don't they? Um, yes. In fact, if you like go and Google an example of Iranian F fourteen Comcats with a hawk on the pylons, you'll you'll see the obvious difference. A firm, big old beasts, right? And they could fire what? Um, they could fire a load of medium, uh, forty clicks uh, yes. range. So ceiling about sixty five thousand feet. Chaparral mm -hmm. is the equivalent of the um, Russian Streller, essentially. Yes. Uh, they fire modified side wonders, as far as I'm aware. Um, and the old yes, Patriot. It's worth noting that the, the Hawk, the Chaparral, and the Patriot are all in DCS. Yeah, agreed. The Patriot. I never knew the Patriot was so good. Look at that. The uh, eighty plus kilometers that puts it on par with SSA ten. I had no idea that it was that good. That's impressive. Uh, and low to high, so that's, you know, it goes up to 100,000 feet or so. So now here's the... Th oh, I'm getting dragged away a bit, but I find them useless in DCS. I never see them firing at anything. I find them absolutely... I think... I don't think... Right, I'm not allowed to say they're not working, but I I, I say I find their radar it's absolutely useless. You go ne anywhere near SA-10, you are nailed. If you go 50 feet, as you saw in our last mission, you get nailed. Y it's hard to get shot by a Patriot, I find. Um, now, I think it's just a thing of a properly positioning the Patriot stuff. I think you'll find that a Patriot is more than lethal if you try to tango with one, and uh, more often than not, your ass is being covered by one. Okay, for, well, for one day, uh, one day in the future, we're going to put an, S3, uh, an SA-10 and a Patriot in DTS. We're going to fly at them and see who shoots it first, and I guarantee it's going to be the SA-10. Anyway, uh, apologising for taking all your time. I know you didn't really learn anything, but I, you got to admit, that was pretty cool stuff we looked at. Um, we're going to look at some more stuff like this because because it's interesting and we like to do it. Other than that, we're going to get back to our DCS stuff. So, Will, see you later.